Hi, my name is Zach Fisher and welcome to another Tech Talk. Today, I'm going to continue the study session around the DCV. And I realize that I haven't really been paying attention to my own advice. I've been spending way too much time putting text on boards and text on PowerPoints. And I don't think that's an effective communication method. I think it's an effective um, leave behind method for if you're trying to read something, but I don't think it's an effective communication method. So I apologize for that. I will try to be a little bit more innovative in the future. And here's my first attempt. Today I will be talking about storage. I may do another episode on storage for studying for the DCV because it's pretty big, pretty important subject and it'll definitely come up multiple times. And today I didn't even talk about vSAN. Today I'm just talking about some of the storage specific things and sometimes when you're looking at things you are getting way deep into like the knowledge base articles and stuff like that. You're like, is this really going to be part of the um, DCB? And then you take the practice test and you're like, Oh yeah, it is. So there's a lot of technical details and I'm going to try and cover as many as possible that are likely to come up. So without further ado, I'm going to start with one thing and this is my installation of a net new data store. So you have to understand when you're trying to um, put in a net new data store for um, to, to put your data on, you have to do a couple of things. You have to do, uh, the first thing though that you have to do that you may get asked about is you're gonna have to, um, Rescan. You have to scan and then scan again. So you're, or it's not scan and then scan again, but you're going to have to click the button rescan in order to discover your device. And then there's a few things that to note around, like after you discover your device, you can create an NFS data store and that data store could there could be multiple like LUNs on the data store if you can combine but they all have to be on a single site and I drew this like bricks like an NFS data store is kind of like bricks and a VMFS data store is kind of like tubes <laughs> I don't know just help me remember it but you can have bricks by themselves and tubes by themselves but not bricks and tubes so, uh, same thing with VMFS. You can um, you can have multiple VMFS data stores in a single site, but you can't um, span a or, or multi, a, a data store with um, excuse me a data store with multiple VMFS LUNs at a single site. But you can't have the VMFS. Uh, data store span across multiple sites. So it's a single site situation. And that makes sense because obviously you're not gonna want your storage across multiple sites, which is crazy. And that is, um, that's kind of the thing. So you, two rules. One, your data stores have to be on one site. And two, they all have to be the same protocol. That makes complete and total sense. Um, two, when you are updating, so a lot of the times they'll ask you questions around updating and updating your, your, um, your file system version. So if you're at NFS version three, you can't do things like Kerberos. So, uh, that is going to limit your security options. So it's a Kerberos authentication and NFS three is not supported. There's several other things that are not supported in NFS version three. So you probably want to get to NFS version four, but to upgrade from NFS version three to NFS version four, what you have to do is you have to unmount the volume. So I got my little cowboy unmounting and then you got to mount them back. Pretty simple. 
but you need to remember that you know it, it also makes sense because um, that is not a native a native VMware tool. It's open source, and anything with file systems, typically, if it's file, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get an outage. You're gonna have to unmount and remount the volume. It sucks. File migrations suck. And the uh, transition between NFS version 3 and NFS version 4, you're going to have to unmount and remount. Okay, so here we go. This is a little bit of a magnifying glass, which I drew very terribly, but it, what this means is there's a series of commands on ESX top which as you may have remembered, I covered a little bit in my CPU session that you're gonna have to remember. And the number one most important one is on IOPS. It's technically IOPS and metadata, but really it's mainly, mainly just IOPS. And that's the, gonna be your CMD slash second. So it kind of sounds like commands per second, IOPS per second, command per second. It really is command per second because it includes your, your metadata. So when you think about IOPS, think about command per second as your, um, your ESX top command that you're looking for. So, so command per second. And then we've got your device average, your kernel average, and then your um, combination of device and kernel average. So all of these DKG are your, um, your averages in terms of response times. So those are your most important commands for storage to remember, or not commands, but your, your most important um, acronyms in ESX top that you may get asked on. So, Make sure you remember those things. And a lot of these things are easier if you have, um, if you have access to a lab or something like that, they're great to just play around with and look at. Next here, we've got hardware acceleration. What is hardware acceleration? Well, it's kind of like the name, um, the name, the notes. It helps accelerate your hardware. So I've got a picture of a bus accelerating versus a sports car. Very poorly done, in my opinion. However, I did it. So there's a few things. If you're thinking about accelerating anything hardware specific for uh, like cloning a VM, deploying a VM, migrating a VM, or disks, um, provisioning even virtual disks, uh, VMFS clustering, metadata operations, thick disk creation. Think about um, a lot of things hardware related, specifically like one of these things that is interesting that I wasn't really aware of until I started looking through the documentation is the VMFS clustering and metadata operations. So you have to understand that um, when VMFS is doing things on a disk level, it will actually, um, it will actually do things, it will get down to the hardware. So that hardware acceleration, when you're managing and clustering VMFS data stores, it actually hits the, hits the hardware. Okay, so number five here, concept to know. Um, when you are, when you are trying to reclaim storage and, um, yeah, reclaim storage, basically I've got a picture of a, a weight and like, Somebody set it down. Can I use that? You're not using that anymore. Um, there's a command and it's called unmap. So I've got un and then a map. So that's kind of an important thing to know that when you're looking to 
do something like uh, reclaim storage, you gotta remember unmapping. Now, um, when you want to remove storage policies, when you're migrating or other situations, there's this thing and it's called the sub policy. So if you want to remove simple things about storage, you remove the sub policy, you delete the sub policy from the storage. Cool. Um, now, get down to the last couple here. So there's multipathing. Multipathing is um, when you're when you're making sure that you have multiple paths active. So if one path goes down, access to the storage does not fail. It's very important. And there's three commands to know on multipathing. One or three three acronyms um, that stand for for several different things. One is PSA, one is NMP, and one is PSP. So the NMP is the um, native multipathing protocol. The PSP is the uh, the plugging, it, it has plug in in the name of it. And then the PSA is the other one to remember. It's mainly about remembering the acronyms for this. So um, the one is the native, the one is the PSA, kind of like the P public service announcement. And the third is the um, PSP. Not sure how well that will help you remember, but I tried. The Number eight here is uh, around increasing the speed, the IO of your um, storage array. So there's this thing and it's called um, IO control. And this helps manage the IO going to and from your machine and optimize that. So IO control is, is important. Now, We've talked a little bit about a, a lot of different things um, relating to storage. This one is kind of loosely related to storage, but you still have to know um, it may work better in the V Center. But um, if you're looking at trying to understand your V Center um, database, there's a couple of places to look. And one is your store slash storage slash chair, and the other one is slash storage slash DB. Those are the places to look for your um, VMware database, your VMware vSign database. And then finally, here, if you've got what's called a raw device mapping file, that is where um, that is where you you get the um, mapping between the physical hardware, uh, the storage device, and your VM. The virtual file is, is better for, um, for, for being able to do things like create snapshots. But, um, and then you can also make larger you can make larger devices, larger uh, ones, and larger data stores with the virtual file, um, larger than two terabytes. So the physical file, that is for um, the physical device snapping. That's for if you're, you have like advanced commands, SAN management commands that you need to be running. Um, but most of the time, if you're gonna be asked questions, they're gonna be asking you for what has more features and the um, virtual raw device mapping is the one that you're going to wanna to choose. So today, to recap, we talked a little bit about installing, we talked a little bit about upgrading, we talked a little bit about monitoring. We talked about 
accelerating your storage hardware. We talked about um, reclaiming some of your storage hardware. We talked about uh, policies. We talked about uh, we talked about some of the uh, multipathing, the I/O control, which are both uh, both for for speed and for for availability of your storage. We talked about the vCenter server storage, and we talked about some of the mapping for storage. So we talked about a lot for storage, um, a lot of specifics that you're going to have to remember for the um, for the exam. And if you have any questions, feel free to put in, them in the comments. I may be doing another one on storage. I didn't even touch vSAN. Um, I haven't seen too much on vSAN yet, but I may actually um, do a, a quick one on a, a quick episode on vSAN. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks everybody for watching.